So recently, Ali Abdulaziz, who is Umar Namagomedov's manager, has been tweeting saying that Umar has a fight booked or a fight in the works. And then when it comes out and it gets announced, it turns out it's going to be Umar taking on a guy making his debut, Bexat Amakan. So that kind of raised a little bit of a question to me. And that's, does nobody want to fight Umar? Because I look at the rankings right now, there are a lot of fighters that are booked right now. Of course, I mean, you do have Piotr Jan fighting, Song Yedong, and then Cheeto's fighting against Sean O'Malley. Corey Sanhagen's been injured, Cejudo and Valashvili are fighting each other, and then you go even lower in the rankings. Figgy's got a fight, of course. I believe there's a few guys here that are booked. I wouldn't see Dominic Cruz fighting Umar, so... I guess it does come down to a little bit of a situation where everyone is booked and there's not really anyone for Umar to fight. But for them to go out there and not even look at the UFC roster for a potential opponent and sign a guy in Bexat Amakan to take him on, it makes you question a little bit. Like, is nobody really wanting to take on Umar? Is it just because he's 16-0 and and a lot of people think that Umar can go out there and beat a lot of fighters? Or... Is it just because everyone's booked out and there's no real opportunity for him? Since, to be honest, he's not going to be a big draw. You couldn't put... I don't think you could put Umar Namakimidov in a pretty big spotlight on, like, a pay-per-view card. To my knowledge, most of his fights have been in the Apex. He hasn't even fought that much in the UFC, only four times. But he's looked very, very good doing so. He was matched up against Corey Sanhagen at one point, then Sanhagen got injured. That's a fight I'd really, really like to see, to be honest. I actually think that Sanhagen... I was picking Sanhagen to beat um, Umar, just to kind of put it out there, just because all we've seen from Umar is a KO over Rayano Bastalos, which is a really, really good win, as Rayano is a pretty tough matchup for anybody in the division. He beat Nate Nimines, Nate Nimines, who's now a flyweight by decision, and then ran through Kalahar, who's, I don't think, in the UFC anymore, to my knowledge, and Morozov's not in the UFC anymore either, so there's still kind of a lot to, I guess, be proven by Umar, but the problem is, if, if no one wants to fight Umar, then we're never really going to get to see that big test out of him, but one thing I will say is I think that although he's not ranked, although he wasn't in the UFC before, I think Bexat Amakan could be a guy to give Umar at least a test, because I was very impressed with Bexat when I went out there and I watched his tape. This guy is really, really good, and even more impressively, he is 26 years old, even if he loses to Umar and Umar gets past him pretty easily, I think Big Sut's going to be ranked one day, man. This guy is a very, very impressive fighter. He almost fights similarly to Umar in a way. I would almost say he fights similarly to Piotr Jan, just with worse striking, if that makes sense. For the most part, Big Sut is a striker that can wrestle. He's a guy that I think his game plan for most fights is just to keep it on the feet and to strike. And then if the opportunity presents itself, then he wrestles. Because if you go out there and you watch his tape, which is very easy to find, and is quite impressive, a lot of the times when he's fighting, it's either people that want to take him down, so he has to defend takedowns over and over again, or it's guys that want to strike with him, and he'll strike with them. But if they make a mistake on the feet that just leaves them open to a takedown, he'll go out there and get one. Like he did against this guy called Mauro Mastromini, where he wouldn't take down Mauro, Unless Mauro got in too close and just kind of gave up his hips or gave up a position where Bexat could get the takedown. These fights can be found on YouTube pretty easily. You've just got to navigate a different language, which isn't really too hard to do because they've got timestamps anyway. But yeah, the fight against Jan Faraz, he was defending takedowns the whole time. He showed really good takedown defense against a guy that, to be fair, isn't as good at wrestling at Umar Namagomedov. But he showed good takedown defense and then he eventually tired out Faraz, dropped him at one point. And then towards the end of the fight, took him down, camped in half guard for a bit, but then just dominated him with the striking, with the ground and pound at the end. So although this is a guy that's not in the UFC, I actually do see Bexit Amakan maybe being a little bit of a test for Umar, just because this guy is good. And another thing I'll say about him as well, is he's actually pretty big for the weight class. I'm pretty sure every single fight I watched of his, he was the bigger fighter out of the two, which is going to be important, because Umar's not a small guy for 135 either. But at the end of the day, Umar is one of those guys where his striking is underrated. Like, his striking might be better than his wrestling, I've seen some people say. Like, he is really good at striking. He's kind of like Usman Namagomedov, where Usman's striking is really good. Because with Khabib, he didn't really have the best striking. He was just so dominant with his wrestling and top control. Umar obviously has the wrestling like Khabib does. I believe they're related. I believe they're cousins. He's got the striking of... um. 
are just a really good kickboxer, but the wrestling to back it up as well. We've seen that so far. I mean, he knocked out Rayone Barcelos. He beat Nate Maness dominantly with the wrestling, but to be honest, it wasn't a fun fight at all. I'm impressed by Umar. I'm impressed by Bexart. I think, though, if Bexart wins, he has to knock him out. Like, he has to. But I think Umar's going to be like good enough at striking to avoid those positions. And even then, I think he might be a good enough wrestler to get Bexart down. Now, with that being said, I don't think I've actually ever seen Bexart get taken down recently. But I think Umar would be good enough to do it. So I'm going to pick Umar to win the fight as like a super early breakdown. But I don't want you guys to look at this fight and just see Bexat Amakan coming in out of nowhere and not thinking he's good because he's not in the UFC. This guy is really good. He's really good, man. Like, I was quite impressed. I know his record is pretty padded, and if you do look a little bit lower, he hasn't fought the best guys throughout his career. But even then, in 2016, he would have been 19 years old, so I can't really blame him that much. He did get choked out in 2020 when he would have been 23. But since then, he's been fighting often. He's been fighting good fighters too. I mean... Anyone from like 22, 2022 onwards, he's taken on some pretty decent fighters. So yeah, Bexart, I think, although I think he loses to Umar, I mean, a lot of people in the roster would lose to Umar. I think Bexart's a guy, I think he's going to be ranked one day, man. He's 26 years old. He's a really good fighter, but I think Umar is also really good. And there are a lot of people that have very, very good expectations, high expectations for Umar and Magomedov. I just kind of think as well, another one, because this is in the Apex. This is a card in the Apex, which is weird, because this is a really good card. I know you look at this fight, the main event, you see Rosenstrike versus Gaziev. That's not a big main event that will sell out an arena. The undercard, I think, would. Perez versus Mikhaev, pretty big names. I mean, um, Anders versus Pickett is a bit near. Alvarez versus Klein is a bit near. Oliveira versus Gamori is a banger. I mean, I know this was actually this was actually the fight card that there was meant to be in an arena in Saudi Arabia. Why didn't they just try and like put it on in an arena like in Bahrain or even in like Europe somewhere? I mean, I feel like this card, honestly, I feel like this card would sell out in, in France. I know you've only got one Frenchman on the card, but if you put maybe a couple more, I don't know. I feel like they kind of missed the opportunity just to put just to move the card to a different area but it might there's not even another video that's just kind of a little bit of a talking point this is a really good cut this card is way too good to be in the apex now that i'm looking at it you've got ranked flyweight chanel versus Ursig. you've got a banger i mean you could have put this on man in bahrain you could have done a, a, a sold out card in bahrain you could have sold it out in france you could have maybe just done it in the uk i feel like people would have paid tickets to go to this this is a good card anyway Umar versus Bexat Amakan has been added to the card. Let's see how, what happens. I'm going to pick Umar. Umar's a safe pick. But I don't think the odds for this one are going to be like minus 800 like you normally get for Umar. If you've got the time or if you're just interested enough into, into watching Bexat, these fights are easy to find. They're fun fights as well. He's a fun fighter. He's, a good, he's, he's very good. He's very impressive. So yeah, with that being said, let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. Do you think people don't want to fight Umar? Do you think, have you heard of Bexart before and do you think he's good? And what do you think of this topology update? Because I'll be honest, take it back, please. Why did you do this? This, this update, is hard. it looks so bad on mobile as well. Topology, I mean, fix this, please. It's so much worse than what you had before. So much worse. Um, And on mobile, it looks so bad. So, yeah. Oh, there's one thing I'd say is a topology. Please just just reverse the update that you've done. This looks this looks kind of shite. I'll be honest. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.